Today, you are going to learn about parallel routing in Next.js. I'm going to first give a conceptual overview on what it is, how it works, different conventions you need to know of, and then we're going to show you just a demonstration application of using these parallel routes within VS Code here. So first off, parallel routes, they basically allow you to simultaneously render one or more pages to the same layout. So typically within Next.js, your layout component wraps your pages and you render out your children within your layout. But what if you want to render multiple pages within the same layout? Well, this is where you can use parallel routing. So this is a little bit more of a complex way to do your kind of routing. But here in this example that they show right here in their docs, they show that, okay, within your app folder, you can create a team parallel route as well as an analytics parallel route. And then you can render them within your overall layout. And that will give you this team page as well as this analytics page. And if this doesn't make any sense to you, just give me a second here. So parallel routing allows you to define independent air and loading states for each route as they're being streams independently. So with parallel routes, you can use these similar to how you use just normal routes within your Next.js applications to where you can still have loading pages and error pages within these parallel route folders. And these will render independent loading and air states for these parallel routes. And if you hear some background noise of stuff that sounds like thunder and lightning, I guess you don't hear lightning, but stuff that sounds like thunder as well as some hail, it's because apparently here in Colorado, it decided to have a hailstorm. So now that I think about it, hopefully my, my truck is okay outside, but we're, we're just going to keep chugging along here. You can kind of conditionally render different routes or different parts of your page. So in this example, they basically say, okay, for this layout, they're going to have a dashboard and a login parallel route that they're going to render, but they're going to first check, okay, if the user is logged in, then they're going to render the dashboard page. But if the user's not logged in, then they're going to re render the login page. So these parallel routes can allow you to kind of conditionally re render these different pages here. Now, for this, you might have seen this weird at symbol here in this video, and that is because parallel routes are created using named slots. Slots are defined with the at folder convention and are passed to the same level layout as props. Okay, so with this, within your app folder, you can create a folder called at analytics. And then since that is within the root of your application, it's just right within your app folder. That means that within your root layout page, you're automatically going to be passed within your props object, a property called analytics, which will allow you to render out the page that you render within your at analytics folder. A little bit tricky, but hopefully the example here will uh, clear things up. And then the folder structure above means the component in at forward slash layout JS now accepts, like I mentioned, the at analytics prop. And also since they do at team for one of their folders, it will also accept the at team prop. So within their root layout here, you're now going to get past an analytics and a team prop. And we're going to switch this to JavaScript just to make this more clear. So in your props object, you can do props.children just like you normally would, but now you're going to be past props.team and props.analytics here. Okay. So within your app, if you create an at analytics and an at team folder and you render out pages within those, then within your props that are passed to your layout component for that same route hierarchy. So since these are right within your app folder, then th this is going to be passed to your layout right within your app folder, you're going to be able to render out those named slots within your layout. And then here it also talks about unmatched routes. So within your named slots here, you can render out a default.js file. And if your route is not matched, then it's going to default to rendering out your default.js route. And that's because with these parallel routes, there is some kind of different rendering that you need to pay attention to that is going to result in a 404 or not shown a 404 and different things like that. So in this example here, 
they have an overall at folder and they have two name slots your at team and at analytics within the team page they have a settings folder which would create a route path forward slash settings but within analytics they don't have forward slash settings so what this shows here is that if you go from your root layout to your settings layout forward slash settings then if you don't have a default.js file in your analytics folder on a soft navigation so you don't do like a hard refresh of that page then you are still going to render your analytics page.js but if it's a hard navigation then you are not going to render that and you're just going to get a 404 because you didn't render a default.js file okay but if you do have a default.js file, then on a soft navigation, you're still going to render your analytics page.js. And on a hard navigation, you're going to render your analytics default.js. Okay, so I definitely recommend you diving into this a little bit more and learning more about these rendering patterns. And I've covered soft and hard navigations in videos before in the, this kind of routing sections of this Next.js tutorial. But this can be a little bit of a gotcha when using these parallel routes. The type of navigation you do matters. Okay, so hard navigation and in this situation to where you didn't have like a, a route available in this name slot compared to this name slot, you could get a 404 if you don't have that default.js. So just make sure to understand this before getting in too much to these parallel routes here. And this kind of explains what I just explained here. And then you can also use the use selected layout segments hook to tell you which of your named route segments are currently active. So similar to how you'd use a hook to tell what path you are on to know what page is active, you could use this use selected layout segment and pass in the named slot to see what segments are active. So this is definitely a little bit of a kind of trickier part when it comes to routing within Next.js, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how it works. But let's now dive into VS Code here and kind of show you how this works a little bit more. So for this, all I've done here is I have created just a create next app. So if I show you my terminal here, what you're gonna see is, if I open up another terminal and I go backwards in my history, all I did is MPX create next app at latest. And then I ran through their prompts just to create a blanket template. Then I opened that folder and ran NPM run dev. So now if I navigate to my local host here, localhost 3000, I get a blank Next.js page. Okay. So that is all I've done here. So now let's add a couple of route segments. And let's just conditionally render those out so you can get an idea for how these parallel routes work. So what I'm going to do here is within my app folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this at admin because we're going to say if the user has admin permissions, then they get to see this page. But if they don't, then they don't get to see this page. And I am also a little bit worried about my truck. So I kind of misspoke earlier earlier I said it's parked outside it's parked outside in a parking garage but there's like a gap in the parking garage to where there's like a little space that's open to where hail could like still fly in there so I'm a little worried about it but not super worried about it because it's that parking garage if it was hailing like that and it was just outside outside of a parking garage I would definitely be worried about it because you know I like my truck so uh with that back to parallel route so I'm going to create this at admin folder here and then a new file, just like you would with any folder within Next.js. I'm going to create a page.jsx file and I'm going to do export default function admin page. And then I'm going to return. I'm going to return. Well, let's just see. I'm going to just do a div and then I'm not going to render any content within my div. I'm just going to throw in some janky styles here so we can see it though. I'm going to say border. No, wait. I'm going to say no, wait. I'm going to say <laughs> width is going to be 500 pixels. And this is going to look so ugly. Height is going to be 500 pixels. And then let's put a gross little background color here of how about yellow? That's about the grossest I can think of here. So this is just going to render out 
I'm thinking it's just going to render out a square that has a background color so you can see the admin page. And maybe let's also let's do like a H1 admin page. OK, so this is my at admin folder. And then I don't. I don't think we really need to render out any more slots to kind of get an idea for this. Actually, let's just do it for fun. So let's do at dashboard and then let's do a new file. And I'm going to go with page.jsx. And that wasn't like me deciding to. I need to because that is the convention within Next.js. So export default function dashboard page. And let's do a very similar thing here so let's open up the admin page here let's take this div go back to the dashboard page let's return a div here but instead of yellow let's go with blue and change this to dashboard page so if i go back to my application here you should see nothing like nothing has changed i have not rendered these out and that is because as i mentioned earlier the way that you render these out is going into your layout file and right now i'm just rendering out my children so all of my pages within my root application is what i'm rendering out because your layouts are going to wrap your pages within your app so if i go back to my page we do not see them here but as you can see i have this vertical scroll bar so i now see my beautiful admin page as well as my beautiful dash bayord page and these are both rendered out so you could play with your css here to like actually render this admin page like on top of this page so on and so forth but i mean if you're going to do an admin page you could maybe have it to just be like scroll down and see an admin page if you are admin so with this all you would have to do to conditionally render these pages is that then say like okay so we're going to say const is admin is equal to is admin and then let's say that you call this function and this is just going to be a function is admin and it's just going to return whether this user is an admin or not so you might get this user from their database check their roles and see if they're in the admin so right now we're just going to say it's false to make them not in admin anymore and then all i would have to do here is say is admin and and render the admin page so if they're an admin then return the admin page and a better name for this would be check if is admin maybe that's a worse name and we'll do that and if i go back here we should no longer see my admin page because they're no longer in admin okay so that is how you can use parallel routes within your application to render out multiple routes within the same page. And you might use it if a user has certain permissions or if they're logged in or something along those lines. I think you can also use it for like modals and stuff like that as well. So that is kind of the gist of parallel routes. It's definitely a more advanced feature when it comes to routing within Next.js. But to kind of continue on these advanced features, let's now talk about intercepting routes and then we'll continue through the rest of this routing. Then we'll get into rendering data fetching and then we'll finish this next.js course with a complete application so i will see you in that next one